it's uh, Tom will, or one of, one of the uh, people at the desk will show you where the room is the next time you come in. Um, and when you come in next week, um, I, don't let the dogs socialize with each other. We'd like to have you just come in, uh, go right into the room, don't bottleneck at the door. We know you're all friendly, just kind of say hi, and then just keep your eye on your own dog. You know, walk around the room, let them, you know, smell everything, because there are tons of smells in here, okay? So let them just sniff and smell to their heart's content. If they're barking, you just relax, okay? Easy, relax, in a nice calm voice to your dog, and just keep walking around. And then Glenn will have chairs set up, just sit down, and you just concentrate on your own dog. You know, massage them, get them to just relax. It's okay if they're barking, let them look around, whatever. Glenn will orchestrate everything. Okay, we want everyone to have a good time. And sometimes one dog looks at another dog funny, and you know, so this dog gets a little bit afraid, and sometimes people don't read those signs very well. And we want to make sure that everybody has a good time. And initially, you know, it's important that everybody just slowly kind of get to know each other. So Glenn will orchestrate all of the, you know, meetings and socializing and all of that. And um, so uh, usually the way the class works is that uh, he will we'll work the dogs for a few minutes. Glenn has a sense of timing with, you know, how much he can do and can't do with a particular group. We'll work for a few minutes and then he'll let the dogs play and socialize, not in one big, you know, rambunctious pack, but usually what will happen is, oh, this dog looks like he's enjoying this dog, this dog over here, but eventually throughout the session you'll find the dogs kind of making their rounds, you know, and they eventually do get to play with each other and, you know, all of that. But we don't let, it, let them just kind of all get into a big heap. And they are on lead, although we do, you, you know, you might be able to let them off lead, you know, just let go of the leash to let them play a little bit. And then what he does is he'll have you call your dog back from the play, which is part of the training, okay? And he'll work you through all of that, okay? So again, next week when you come, it'll be in another room. Just go right into the room, let them go around the periphery, let them sniff, let them bark, you know, and your whole attitude is going to be relax, easy. Okay, and we're going to talk about voice control and all of that kind of stuff, okay, today. But um, let me introduce you to Tom. Tom is the, um, the owner of uh, North Shore Dog, and he just wants to talk to you a little bit about his uh, daycare center. I gave you the coupons uh, for a free uh, day of daycare for you to kind of get introduced to it. So he'll go ahead and let you know. Good morning. About his operation. You all get a gold star for coming in on a day like this. Uh, who here has owned dogs before? And then we have some new dog owners. Okay. Uh, well, congratulations. Uh, here at North Shore Dog, we do both uh, daycare for the dogs as well as boarding. And if you've not brought a dog for daycare, a lot of people haven't. Uh, it's a little, you know, what, what exactly is daycare? And it's pretty much an indoor dog park type of environment for the dogs. It's a place for them to come uh, to really get lots of exercise, uh, build up their social skills. Dogs are naturally packed animals, but they don't, if they don't have an opportunity to play with each other, they really lose those skills. So some of the benefits that people see of, of uh, early daycare is that uh, they do get their exercise. You know, a lot of owners don't have the time to really give their dogs the exercise they need, as well as a lot of owners have some difficulties leaving their dogs home alone alone. Uh, when dogs are home alone, uh, they don't like it. They could get into mischief. They could bark and annoy your neighbors. So a lot of people bring their dogs here for daycare uh, just so uh, they really have an opportunity to exercise and, and really uh, just fill their days with fun things rather than just waiting in anticipation in front of the front door. So uh, we do daycare here on, uh, on weekdays from 7 to 7. And the way the day runs for the dogs is a play session from 7 until noon. From noon until 2, we do put the dogs in crates for nap time. They play so much that they really do need to have a chance to, to rest and recharge their batteries. And then it's a play session, again, from, uh, from 2 o'clock until 7 o'clock at night. Um, we have four different playrooms here. This, by far, is the smallest one. Uh, the rooms that your dogs normally play in are like 50 foot by 50 foot. So it's a lot of room for them to run and get their exercise. Um, 
We also are big compared to some other doggy daycares because we have so many different rooms. We get to group the dogs by size and play style. Uh, that has two benefits. For one, dogs have a lot more fun playing with compatible playmates. And just overall, it's a safer environment for the dogs. You really don't have to worry about that big greyhound stepping on your, uh, your little chihuahua or, 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 or you know, monkey or whatnot. Although there are some chihuahuas with big dog personalities that yep, want yep. to be in there with the big ones. And, and when I say <laughs> we group the dogs by size and play style, it is more like Judy says. It, it's according to the play style. Uh, sometimes we have some bigger dogs that are a bit timid that we put in with the smaller dogs. And sometimes we have some smaller dogs that just naturally like to play with the big ones. Uh, so it's a, you know, it's a, a great place to bring your dogs for, for exercise and develop their social skills. Uh, kind of a fun thing that we do here is all of our, uh, all of our playrooms have video cameras that are live streamed to our website. So if your dog comes here for daycare, uh, you could watch them on your computer or your smartphone. Uh, and we like to tell people it's always fun to watch your dog playing. Uh, they are hysterical to watch. But it's also equally important that you see how the a staff here treats your dogs. Uh, we do make a commitment to our people, and we're serious about it, is that there always is a person in the room with the dogs while they're playing. These are all people who have a lot of experience in dog behavior and training, so rest assured we take good care of your dogs. And we invite you, if you're ever watching the camera and you see something that bothers you, pick up the phone and call me, and we'll, uh, we'll get to the bottom of it. So that's daycare. We also do boarding year-round. Uh, because we're a daycare center, we do boarding a little bit differently than your traditional kennel. Traditional kennel, normally the dogs are put in a run or a, a crate and they don't get too much attention. Here, all the dogs that come to the boarding spend the days playing with the daycare dogs. They get a lot of exercise and a lot of attention. When the daycare dogs leave by 7 o'clock at night, that's when the boarding dogs get their dinner. After dinner, they have another play session until about 9 o'clock at night. And by then, they really are ready to go to bed. So, you know, it's a healthier alternative to boarding than your traditional kennel, and uh, quite frankly, the dogs have fun with them. You know, you'll probably miss them more than they're going to miss you. So, that's what we do. If you ever have any questions or you want to have a tour around the facility when Judy's done with her session, just uh, either stop me or stop one of the people here at North Shore Dog. All right? Okay, thank you. Thanks, thank you. Yes, Tom's absolutely right. The, uh, Doggy daycare is really, I think, a necessity, all right, for a lot of people. I think it's, uh, nowadays, you have to count it in as one of those things you need to plan for, just like veterinary care, training, and that kind of thing. A lot of it because, as Tom said, dogs need lots of exercise, and often we can't give them the exercise they need. Um, you know, when I was a kid, the way things worked was, our dogs were just outside and they weren't tied up or anything like that. They were just out and about and running all over the place. And they'd be gone all day long. Sometimes they were gone for days. And my mom would say, oh, he'll be back, she'll be back, you know? Um, and now, if the dog is, is out of our sight for five seconds, who left the door open, where's the dog? You know, and rightfully so. But I have to tell you, there were a lot of advantages for dogs and their humans back when I was a kid. First of all, they were outside running around, which meant they were getting tons of exercise. I mean, they, they, were, they would be gone miles, okay? I mean, they were just all over the place. Now, we're the fitness directors. If we don't get our dogs out there playing, they don't get the exercise they need. And I can tell you, dogs on the leash do not get the exercise they need. Most dogs, now not all, but most dogs need to really be running hard and playing and, um, and we just can't give them that kind of exercise, especially when we have to, you know, have to walk them on the leash. So uh, a lot of times when we're called in because of problem behaviors, like aggression or some other things, destructive <coughs> behaviors, whatever, uh, very often you'll find that it's a dog that's under-exercised because they have all this energy and nowhere to put it. But you're, you know, you're wrong in your, you know, your walls, and they're chewing everything up, and you know, they're all over you, et cetera, et cetera. So exercise is extremely important. A well-exercised dog is going to be a very happy human. Okay. The next thing is when I was, when my dogs were out there running around, they were socializing with dogs in the neighborhood, for better or worse. Some of the times they got into little tiffs. Never heard of dogs killing each other. Okay. They were just out there being dogs. Dogs are going to be like that. They're going to nip each other every once in a while, get into a little scuffle, whatever. That's what 
what dogs are all about, okay? But the, the prime thing is they were socializing with other dogs, okay? They were socializing with people, the kids in the neighborhood, the, you know, the postal carrier, you name it, with everybody. Now, we're the social directors. If we don't get our dogs out there to be with other dogs playing, et cetera, they don't get that social outlet that they desperately need because an under-socialized dog very often turns into an aggressive dog. Okay, not always, but often. So dogs that aren't socialized properly and consistently with other dogs and with people, and by people I mean, you know, the whole gamut, the puking and mewling infant, the doddering old fool, and everybody in between. Some dogs do well with, you know, babies, they don't do well with toddlers. Some dogs do well with the very young, but they don't do well with uh, kindergarten, that age, or preschoolers, uh, prepubescent. Uh, some don't do well with men with beards, hats, you name it. And a lot of it has to do with the fact of socializing them. They have been out in the world. They meet and greet lots of different dogs, lots of different people, in lots of different situations before you can feel fairly sure that they're going to generalize this to new dogs coming into their to their environment, new people coming in, okay? So when I talk to people and say, does your dog socialize with other dogs? Oh yeah, I place with the dog next door. Well, that's not enough, okay? That's not enough. Dogs need lots of ex exposure to other dogs and again to people before you can feel fairly confident that in a new situation with a new dog, new people, they're probably going to be able to generalize those social skills. Okay, because dogs don't generalize very well. So they may do well with this dog over here, but, you know, a new dog comes in and it's like, forget it. But the more opportunity they have to be with all types of dogs, ages of dogs, types of people, ages of people, the more likely you are that you're going to have a pretty well-balanced dog who's not going to be acting aggressively out of fear because they're under-socialized. And 70% of our caseload is aggression. And it's not the Akitas and the, the Pitbulls and the Rotties, you know. It's like the Cockapoos and the, uh, you know, uh, Golden Retrievers and Labs and you name it. Any dog can act aggressively. Any dog can bite. It's a natural canine behavior, okay? And a lot of people just are too, totally clueless when it comes to aggression or what I like to call aggressive behavior. Okay, at the end of this session, I'm going to stay on because uh, we're going to be recording and I'm going to talk about aggression. Those of you that want to hear the information about that, please do stay on, but I don't want to have to keep everybody. I used to include it in my, um, my presentation and the orientation because I think everyone needs to have that information, but there's so much information to give you that I'm just throwing out all this stuff and it's going over the two hours and it's just way too much. Okay, so if, if you would like to stay for that, you're more than welcome to. Okay, so we're the fitness directors, we're the social directors. We also have to keep our dogs mentally stimulated, and those aren't empty words. You know when they talk about uh, an enriched environment for zoo animals, for example? Well, how much more do we need enriched environments for our dogs? And, and I'm like you, I'm busy, my dogs suffer too. I don't have time sometimes to get them exercising as much as they need to. I don't have time to be playing with them as much as I need to, et cetera, et cetera. So I'm with you guys. I'm a dog owner as well as a dog trainer. And I know how hard it is, you know, when you're working and you've got jobs and kids and all kinds of things going on. But a lot of our dogs end up sitting at home, same old house, day in and day out, waiting for us to come back from work or whatever. Same old toys, same old environment. It's not really good for dogs. I mean, it would be like having a child, and that child is just never socializing with other kids and just sitting around all day long with a few toys. Think about it. That's, that's not, um, that is not going to foster the kind of um, growth in a dog that, you know, that ideally you want. Now obviously we can't, you know, we can only do so much, right? We can only do so much, but at least be aware. 
dogs need to be mentally activated and, 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 and um, exercised, if you will. And so you say, yeah, well, how do I, do, how do I mentally exercise my dog, you know? Well, first of all, training. Training and getting dogs to cooperate with you and to do things, okay, is really, it really keeps dogs thinking, all right? And we'll talk a little bit about that in a bit. Um, play is also obviously can be very mentally stimulated. So rather than throw the ball, bring it back, throw the ball, bring it back, um, you know, throw the ball, bring it back, put it in that box before I pick it up and throw it again. Or you have to sit and stay before I'll throw it. Or you have to sit and stay, I throw it and then I release you to go get it. All of that kind of training, if you will, is going to make for a very cooperative dog who responds well to you, okay? And, but also is getting that kind of mental stimulation. There are lots of toys on the market that now are designed for dogs that, um, you know, for example, things that they have to paw to open or move with their noses to be able to get the goodie that's inside. And some of them you can rig so that they're a little bit more difficult to open. So they have to figure these things out. So all of that kind of um, interaction with toys, with you, uh, with training, um, taking them out and about, new places, new sights, new sounds, that's also very stimulating for dogs. A lot of us get into this pattern of they're either at home, they're in the yard, or maybe I take them for a walk and the walk's usually in the same old place. So you really want them to see the world. Now, caution, summer's coming up. It's hot, dogs don't do well with heat, some don't, are worse than others, depending on the, the breed. You have to be very careful with dogs. Dogs don't sweat the way we do. They have a different cooling system. They are cooled through the pads of their feet and their mouths. That's why you see them panting and dripping, because that's their cooling system. So when the air is hot and the ground is hot, they're dying. Okay, I'll watch people walking down the boulevard in Gloucester and the dogs are wanting to go onto the grass. First of all, because dogs like grass, they want to be on the grass. They don't, you know, especially, you know, they prefer that to the sidewalk. They need the ions from the dirt. Dogs need to be in dirt. Okay, but also um, a lot of times because it's hot and the sidewalk is hot and it's cooler on the dirt and the grass. And I'll watch people walking along and the dog is trying to get over to the grass and the person's pulling them back. You know, this dog doesn't cooperate, you know. The fact is that when dogs do things, most often it's for a good reason. And you may not see the reason, but it's for a good reason. Dogs usually don't do things because they're jerking your chain, they're trying to get back at you, they're, you know, they're stubborn, they're this, they're that. They know what they need. Now that's not to say you let them do whatever they want. Obviously, they will, you know, you know, if they like to do such and such and it's destructive for you, you can't allow it. So we do have to set perimeters. But please understand that when your dog starts to do something, really stop and think, you know, why is this dog doing this? You know, um, sniffing poop, guess what? Dogs sniff poop. And they'll, you should let them sniff poop. This is a dog thing. They are not humans. Don't try to turn them into little people. One of the big problems these days is that, well, when I was a kid, they were just dogs. They weren't part of the family for the most part. Now, we swung to the other extreme. They're like, you know, these little fur people, and we begin to treat them that way, and they're dogs, and that's why I have a job. Because people don't understand how to treat dogs like dogs and still give them the love and all the good things that you want to give to them, but still treat them like dogs, which is what they are. So sniffing poop, doing all those kinds of things. I mean, now if your dog eats poop, which some dogs do, or they roll around in the poop, which some dogs do, then I can understand you not wanting them to get near the feces, okay? But for the most part, let them sniff. Let them sniff butts. A lot of dogs, their dog will go over to another dog to sniff the butt and they're pulling the dog away. Don't do that. You're going to get your dog so freaked out over other dogs because every time I go over to another dog, I can sense this thing in my humans and it travels down that leash just like lightning, lightning down Benjamin Franklin's kite, 
string and you know it's like oh why what's wrong why are they pulling me away there must be something wrong here remember you're the leader they take your cues and if you're not a leader guess what they fill the spot so leadership with dogs is extremely important and again those aren't empty words they need benevolent leadership you don't have to be the boss you don't have to be the master, but you have to be a leader. You have to set the tone. You have to set the parameters. Let your dogs know what is allowed and what is